Let's go out to Josina Anderson, senior NFL insider, USA Today, NFL insider for CBS Sports and host of The Crew and Undefined with Josina Anderson. Jacina, very happy to talk to you today. I uh, was in Miami this weekend and I saw your report. I didn't spend a whole lot of time on, on social media, but I did see your report. And I thought it was very, very juicy. So I've been dying to talk to you all weekend about this. But thanks for coming on with us today. Well, first of all, uh, I know you're trying to get to the news and all of that. We're going to do that. But first, uh, I want to just highlight the fact that it's ladies night on Colin Coward's show Mm -hmm. with you and Alex. So we're hyping that up and you got your honorary doctorate. So we are going to raise the roof on that. So congratulations, Dr. Joy. Thank you. Thank you, Justina. (laughs) I'll raise the roof. <laughs> I yeah, feel- you're raising the roof, lower the roof, the ceiling's <laughs> not the roof, whatever it is. <laughs> I feel very, hu- very humble about it. Um, I don't, I don't like to, you know, brag on myself like that. But thank you, just Girl, whatever, really Doctor Joy, please. <laughs> Um, okay. Well, you do an amazing job covering the league as you have for a very long time. And I'm, I'm fascinated by this report, mostly because, um, one, I've, I feel like I saw this trend coming with Baker, but also the other side of it, this is a twofold story because of how the league is treating the Browns now because of the Deshaun Watson situation. So let's start with the Deshaun Watson side of it. Is the rest of the league sending a message to the Browns with this make Baker Mayfield situation from what you're hearing? I don't know so much that it's sending the Browns a message as it is somewhat of a collective perception of what these teams feel like the Browns leverage is because of the presence of Deshaun Watson and Jacoby Brissett on their roster and knowing that eventually the idea is for Baker not to be there. Now I have my own opinions and I've been talking about this a lot on Twitter about the concept of leverage, because you can talk about leverage as static, meaning what it is right now relative to the circumstances right now. But as we all know, leverage is a fluid concept. It changes. And this, what I reported back when they had the owners meetings in, in West Palm Beach, Florida, is that my understanding is that the Browns, first of all, they didn't just think about this last night. They have been conceiving this for a while. Uh, And my opinion is that Andrew Barry is not a fool. So he's thought through all of these scenarios. And that includes budgeting for the probability that Baker Mayfield may have to be on the roster for a while if they couldn't get the trades taken care of. And the other thing I just wanted to mention real quick, and we can go into this, is that a lot of people have been talking about this has to do with money. They didn't get it done. The Panthers didn't get it done or what have you. And the Seahawks, he's not there yet or not coming or what have you because of money. And mechanically, that is true. But I feel that this is more of a philosophical thing, an egotistical thing. And the reason why I say that is because Baker Mayfield is getting his 18.858 regardless. That option is fully guaranteed for injury cap and skill, and that started with his class. He's getting his money regardless. But the point that I'm trying to make as to why I don't really think about this as money, so to speak, is because 18 million, guys, relative to what the quarterback market is now, with guys making upward of 45 million, including Deshaun Watson, is not a lot of money. So even with the Panthers, with Sam Darnold also making that 18.85 and you bring in on Matt Corral, which is going to get a, a third round compensation a lot, which is not a lot of money. You can, even if, if the Browns were to take on 50% of that and listen to this nine plus 18 is still what 27. That's not a lot of money. That's basically what the 49ers are paying Jimmy Garoppolo. This is about what people feel like the Browns should be doing or their own personal philosophies relative to what they think the situation is with the Browns. But I do not agree. Right. So, so I agree as far as the leverage thing, because that's why I feel like it didn't happen. So obviously the Deshaun Watson thing sort of came together pretty quickly because we know there were other suitors on the market and then the Browns came with the money. And obviously he was going to go where he's getting $230 million guaranteed, which is completely understandable. So you didn't trade Baker Mayfield who had an injury. And if Deshaun had chosen not to come to the Browns, then you would have run it another year with Baker Mayfield being that you are paying him that 18 million guaranteed. So I'm with you. I think the league is saying you have no leverage. You have a 
quarterback and Deshaun Watson that you're paying guaranteed money. You have Jacoby Brissett. We know that you don't want to keep Baker Mayfield on the roster, even if you have budgeted the money. So why would we give you a crumb for Baker Mayfield? Because you may not want to, and we know that they don't want to, but we know that they can. First and foremost, one of the things I feel like people are not necessarily getting into is we don't know what's happening with Deshaun Watson relative to his status for the upcoming 2022 uh, season because of the uh, situation that you guys mentioned in the previous uh, segment with his, you know, uh, civil litigation that is is ongoing, right? We know that from a criminal standpoint, uh, that's over. But even at the owners meetings in West Palm Beach, the commissioner reminded us, not that we needed it, that you do not have to be charged just like Ben Roethlisberger wasn't, just like Ezekiel Elliott was not, and who got uh, four and six games suspended for those situations when it was just involving uh, one female. You don't have to be charged to be suspended. So we don't know how many games Deshaun Watson is going to be available for or not. And oh, by the way, when he did do that five-year, $230 million contract, that $46 million average that he has was already converted to signing bonus. So now you got just that $1 million that he's going to be, what is it, $1 million that he's going to be paid for this year. So Andrew has massaged the money to uh, make this situation, you know, potentially in terms of having Baker Mayfield on the roster, if, if need be. So they may not want to, and we know that they don't want to, but they can. And that's more important. That's the operative word is that they can. And so when team it's easy, and I was just talking to a source relative to the Panther situation, we can, and we can get into what I was hearing, you know, from Carol, you know, from the Carolina situation uh, earlier today. But, but my point is, is that it's easy to sit back now and be like, oh, you know, we don't need to do this. We don't prefer to do this, whatever, because we're not close to games. But once we start getting into the preseason, the regular season, and fans start hollering, and you're four games deep into a regular season staring at one and three or one and two, or, or we're just reminded of what your actual quarterback depth is, eh, your feelings might change. Or even worse, something happened to your starter or your backup. Leverage is fluid. Oh, no, that part I totally agree with. Yeah. That's why mm -hmm. I think that, well, S San Francisco situation is a little bit different because I think there are some still some questions about Trey Lance, but they both are in situations where they it's known that they want to move on from Jimmy Garoppolo and Baker Mayfield, but why do it now? There's no point. You have all the leverage to just wait. You can say you're going to run with the quarterbacks that you have in Seattle or Carolina. When you get into it, you're absolutely right. Then things change or there, you know, there's an injury, which we all know. There's going to be an injury. It just depends on how deep that particular team that has the injury is at quarterback and how bad the injury is, because that's just how the league goes. So I'm with you. The leverage in the situation no is rush, quite fluid. Joy. Yeah. Enjoy. There's no rush to do it right now. We want it done now because, you know, we want headlines. And I, I say we <laughs> right. are talking about the media, what have you. But there's literally no rush. And just, you know, I was talking to a lead source about the Carolina situation. And I was told uh, this morning, the door is not all the way closed, you know, but they're not pressed. And, 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 and so, and I said, just like I said to you, okay, well, it's, you know, it's easy for folks not to be pressed now, but that situation can change. And Baker Mayfield is a former number one overall pick. I see James Bradbury got, you know, cut just now before we came on. That cannot happen you know, with Baker Mayfield, I feel that Andrew has to get compensation relative to Baker Mayfield's pedigree. See, that's the thing that I, I don't know is going to happen. I think it will be, mm -hmm. it will be a team that's desperate and maybe that's why they'll get something for him. But when you look at the scale of Baker Mayfield's career, he hasn't had that much success and he's not shown the ability to elevate a team that is struggling. He's only shown the ability to have success in a near perfect situation. And that success was one playoff win so it's not like we're talking about somebody who's been a number one overall pick and had massive incredible success he's made the browns relevant yes deserves credit for that and has elevated them to a point tell where, us how you feel joy i, I mean i just say it all the time i i'm out of baker mayfield i i completely so, like bought into it and thought that the culture was shifting around in cleveland and i think now that i've taken a step back and looked at the six the success over the last four years and it's not, it's what nothing has really changed. They've won one playoff game, which is fine. But like, is that what we're aiming for? I do think that they have more standards now, which is why they made the big swing for Deshaun Watson. But when you're looking at Baker Mayfield's career, he has not elevated a team that has struggled. He has not been able to thrive in situations that were dysfunctional. 
which which may not be his fault. It's hard for anyone to do that. But you can't speak about him in the air of someone like a Joe Burrow who went into a, a Cincinnati, which we did not consider to be a contender, and took them to the Super Bowl with a, the one of the worst offensive lines in the league. There's levels to this year. So you can talk about a number one overall pick, but that maybe was the Browns reaching. So I could see why they would want to get compensation for him. But if I'm, a, if I'm someone else around the league, I'm like, why do I want someone that fights with local reporters, can't elevate a team that's struggling, and has won one playoff game in his career? And it's coming off you surgery. Know why? Okay, so that's that's a good question. And all of those are, are great points and they're excellent points. And I do agree that there's levels to it, right? Um, and we and we do give credit for Baker Mayfield, you know, raising uh the Cleveland Browns. I believe they were one in thirty one before he got there. Obviously, they won more games since he's come there, but oh, there absolutely. is an apt question which you which you raise as to whether, you know, is you know, being the quarterback that takes you to that next level. And, and, and certainly he's accomplished that to a degree by getting them to the playoffs in the, in the, in the previous season. But, you know, but relative to um, is he that next guy? This is what I would say, because you made the point about arguing with local reporters and, and whether you can raise the, you know, raise all boats and all that other stuff. I do believe that Baker Mayfield should be given room as we all should be given room to evolve. And, and the, trust me, there are so many things, and I've tweeted this, so I'm not saying anything I'm afraid to say. I've already tweeted this. There are things that I obviously don't agree with that occurred this past season when uh, Odell Beckham Jr. was there. However, however, you know, I don't believe anybody should be a prisoner of, of the narrative of the past. And he has room to be able to, to grow. I think he will learn from this. I think that, you know, hearing what people are saying in back channels or, or quite frankly, excuse me here, uh, publicly, whether you're listening to a Robbie Anderson or what have you, or you want to have a conversation about whether uh, a lot of his teammates have been, you know, talking on his behalf or not, or what have you. I think Baker has absorbed all of that. And if it hurts, it should. And that's OK. He's not the only one that has gone through adversity at work and you absorb that and you learn from it. And I do think that if he um, has to you know, come back to the Browns, that he would comport himself as a professional, one, because that's what I expect. And two, because he has to. And I've talked to sources who feel like he's in a situation where he has to. And, and they know that. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm with you on the grace of it all. Like, I don't think, mm -hmm. I think he is still a starting quarterback in the league and I think he'll get another opportunity to be a starter there. I'm not saying his career is over or anything like that. And especially no, you're when you're talking you can, about the degree. Yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah, I think, I feel like I've seen enough of him to know how good he is. I don't think he has a next gear. And when you look at the roster that the Browns had and Kevin Stefanski is a coach of the year, I, I'm like, what, what, how much more do you need uh, is my point. So, I, of course, and I do think he will learn from this. I hope so. This was, I mean, it couldn't have gone much worse getting replaced in the, in the fashion that he did. So if, if he does end up uh, not playing for the Browns again. But it's, uh, it's a very interesting situation. I, I cannot wait to see how this situation and the Jimmy Garoppolo one plays out in San Francisco. But thank you so much for coming on with us, Josina. Always excellent. Senior NFL Insider for USA Today and NFL Insider for CBS Sports. Really appreciate you. Queen Joy, appreciate you having <laughs> me on. Good to see you, Alex. <laughs> thank you. Always great to see you. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.